Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter here with a quick Star Wars lore video. Before I begin, a couple of hours ago I uploaded a brand new video on my second channel, X2, where I take a closer look at the infamous Yoden mod for Star Wars Empire at War. Anyway, much like the Infinity and its underslung frigates, Star Wars capital ships, especially very large ones, have sometimes been known to carry smaller ships, either in their hangar or somehow attached to their body. The best example of this would be the Mega Star Destroyer, but we also know that the Eclipse 1 had a large enough hangar to carry a Victory, and even a standard Star Destroyer would sometimes be configured to carry either a gunship or a small corvette. However, there are very, very few examples of ships carrying something as large as an Imperial Star Destroyer, which is, remember, 1.6 kilometers long. Even space stations would usually keep ships of that size docked to an external ring or array, and that just has to do with the practicality of making something large enough to actually house such a gigantic vessel. However, one station that can do this is the Death Star, at least in Star Wars canon. Now, some very old guides have said that the Death Star could carry a couple of strike cruisers within its internal bays, but nothing larger than that. Canon, however, actually includes a scene of a Star Destroyer moored or docked with the Death Star 1, and I'd say most of you probably think I'm crazy, but it's a blink and you'll miss it moment in Rogue One as Krennic's shuttle leaves the station. This appears to be the equatorial trench, and we see a large array of hangars, including one where a Star Destroyer superstructure is very clearly visible. Earlier on in the movie, there's also a nice shot of the Death Star with orbiting Star Destroyers, and you get a nice look at the equatorial trench. There are clearly hangars of different size, and I'm sure that this wasn't the only Star Destroyer capable one. And I mean it makes sense, the Death Star has so much mass, and a relatively small portion of that is actually dedicated to powering the super laser. The rest is basically a shell. Logically, you'd want the Death Star to be able to take care of its support fleet, especially if it's operating as a battle station away from nearby Imperial centers. This is sort of like the Mega Star Destroyer. That hangar probably isn't used for Star Destroyers parking routinely. Most of the time, if someone needed to go on station, they would just take a shuttle, but if the ship needed to be restocked, if there were repairs or upgrades to be made, then there's actually an open space for it to do so. It's also possible possible that, again, like the Supremacy, the Death Star's ships aren't launched unless there's anticipated action, so the Star Destroyer can be carried through hyperspace as a sort of mobile fleet with the station. In Legends, the Death Star, when under construction, was serviced by a small Imperial task force, so these massive facilities, which would have been present even on the incomplete model, would have certainly helped keep things stocked up. References to Star Destroyers docking within the Death Star, however, actually go all the way back to Lost Stars. In that book, we read that the Devastator is docked with the DS-1 for some time after the capture of the Tantive IV. However, I always assumed that it was connected via some sort of tube or docking sleeve, but it's possible that the ship was literally inside a very, very large hangar. All of this actually plays really nicely into the Tarkin Doctrine, and I'm sure Palpatine's ultimate goal was to have a Death Star within every sector, not only for the station destructive capabilities, but just for the ability to project force from a central location. All this leads me to a few questions, and I'm curious to get your guys' insight. First of all, could the Death Star actually travel with Star Destroyers within the hangars? Did the hangar bays close, and did the Death Star at most times generally have some sort of internal complement, perhaps even a mobile defense fleet? Even if it did, it makes sense that we didn't see it at Yavin, because the Empire was rushing to get the base within range, and Tarkin was extremely overconfident. But that leads to my second question. Can we add several capital ships to Luke Skywalker's kill count at that battle? And finally, did the Death Star itself have proper shipbuilding capabilities like the Mega Star Destroyer? Was it able to perform serious refits or repairs? Or was it really just to facilitate the movement of assets between station and capital ship? 
I personally think that if you're going to make such a large station, you might as well have it be a shipyard, and I mentioned in a previous video just how important these sort of facilities are. The final thing I'd like to mention is the Star Destroyer in this image, and I've zoomed in even more here in case you can't see it, does seem to be a little wonky. The back of the superstructure does seem to be on a pretty severe angle, but I think it's definitely an ISD, and it's just a trick of positioning or whatever else. Today's question comes from Jacob Young, who asks about Jedi Starfighters and how they differed from regular Starfighters. The main difference is that Jedi Starfighters are stripped down, basically, with very little in the way of shields and armor. Instead, given an extreme focus on speed and maneuverability. However, they're so specialized that they're only really effective in the hands of a Force-sensitive being who can, you know, use the Force to pilot. Otherwise, the extra speed and maneuverability will go to waste and there's not really any point then of sacrificing the armor, shielding, and weaponry that you could have on a standard fighter. Jedi were probably also given different roles. They'd be leading formations and not just fighting off in the wings somewhere. And I think this probably influenced the type of starfighter that they piloted. So it's not like a clone couldn't pilot an Actus or a Jedi couldn't pilot an Arc-170, but the Jedi is able to use the highly specialized fighter to make it extremely effective, well, most clone pilots probably could not. I hope that answers your question. If you guys have something you'd like to see me answer at the end of a future video, leave it down below with the hashtag AskEck. Really hope you enjoyed this one, guys. If you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, leave a comment, and of course, hit that notification bell. Anyway, until next time, guys, this has been your host, Eckhart's Letter. As always, be safe, have a great week, and may the Force be with you.